What's up you guys, Batjack JW coming to you. We are in another high def video and it's a close up. Close up, yes. It's the pre-Model 10. We're all familiar with the Smith & Wesson Model 10 as it is probably one of the most produced revolvers out there and you can get them uh, all over. In fact, uh, some of my fellow YouTubers, uh, Uzi9, congratulations on him on actually obtaining a Model 10 heavy barrel 4 inch. Really nice. Well, this one goes back a ways. This is a snubby Model 10. This, this is only a 2 inch barrel on it, and this is a pre Model 10 with the uh, C, uh, C prefix in the serial number here. Um, you can actually see it. Turn the gun around, you can actually see the C prefix. That means this thing is dated to 1948. Can you believe that how old, that's how old this thing is, 1948. This is really cool. A um, Couple of things about it. Uh, of course, there's a backstory to this gun and my obsession with getting it anyway. I told that story right there on a episode of a, you know, of a gun. Um, story of a gun anyway i put the link right up here you can check it out if you like anyway um this is really cool because back then um they didn't have model numbers and of course this became known as the model 10 in 1957. this is the uh last run the c prefix would be the last run of this um how would you say uh style and features the more of a, a bladed front sight rather than a ramp. You can see it's just more of like a bladed, um, it's not like a ramp that's checkered. And um, the hammer is a little bit different. Uh, the hammer is a lot different than your your uh, Model 10. I do have a Model 10, It looks just like this. It's a Model 10-5. We'll bring that out in another video, but this one's all about that pre Model 10, this is known as the military and police post-war gun. Uh, this is really cool. Right after World War II, they started to make these things. Um, this has got the original grips. That was a big thing for me when I found it. Uh, it's got the diamonds on the grips, the diamond and the checkering, and they're in really good shape. Give you a nice close-up in HD of those grips. That is a beautiful part of this gun, that it had the original grips. You know, and if you, I, I don't know how well it's going to show up in the video and do it justice, but man, they are beautifully charactered. They're worn. They, you know, they've darkened up over the years. Um, but uh, the gun is real smooth, real tight. And uh, there will be something else. Uh, if you're looking at this side of the gun, there's something else that you'll notice that may be different from your normal Smith & Wessons that you see. And that is, if you notice, the, give you a second, uh, can you figure it out? <laughs> All right, it's the, uh, the screw right here. So, wow, what is that? And uh, if you notice by the trigger guard, there's another one. This is known as what they call a five screw model. So uh, underneath the grip here, there's another screw. So you got one, two, three, four, five. Um, that's that's another indication that this this revolver is a little bit dated and goes back a ways and it's definitely a vintage Smith and Wesson double action revolver um, that is still resembling what we uh, kind of recognize today in the market. So just to kind of give you a size comparison because this is a a K frame and it's a, a six shot snubby uh, that is what else is really special about it especially for me. Um, Normally, these things that you see are five shots. Uh, here I got a, a comparison for you. Here's a uh, Smith & Wesson J-Frame uh, 36 that's real popular. This is a real famous uh, snubby that you know, mostly you see. And just the size, I'll back the camera up off of zoom a little bit just so you can see the uh, size comparison. Uh, it's quite a beefy gun. Um, I think that's a, something to get out and you know put out there is uh, you know most people are, are familiar with uh, seeing this one and I don't have very large hands and it fits pretty much in my hand with the the butt uh, sticking out a little bit but you know you can almost get especially somebody with some paw like hands could fit this thing in the palm of their hand um, not so much with this one <laughs> you can see the comparison and that's what is really attractive about it for me it was just that that it it's the most massive uh, 
size snubby I've ever seen. Uh, I do shoot it, we'll get it out and shoot it. It shoots really, really smooth and nice. Um, as all Smiths pretty much do. Uh, you gotta get spoiled with Smith & Wessons when you start shooting them. Uh, they just shoot like a dream. Uh, this one here, also the, the finish is more, it's not so much like a nice glossy finish like uh, we're used to seeing. It's more of a, a toned down finish. And you know, that kind of is like an indication it was used for military and police, less glare and all that. You know, they weren't necessarily going for something that was uh, for say, a thing of beauty, although it truly is. I drool every time I pull this thing out of the safe. I love this gun so much. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's kind of a, a toned down finish. I don't know how much in a video that that serves it justice, you know, to talk about it, but it is a lot more uh, toned down uh, in comparison, so. It may not look it in the video, but it is. <laughs> and uh, of course, I love the big Smith & Wesson logo right there on the side. There's no mistake that uh, what it is. And it, the interesting thing is um, this side of the barrel is uh, just plain. It's not stamped uh, like most are. Most are the caliber or, or something is stamped over there. Uh, the actual, everything else, everything on it, uh, the name and trademark and the cartridge, everything is stamped on this side. So, it's got the uh, pin barrel, the cross pin, and it's got the, the rear sight, just like a trench sight, so it's not adjustable or anything. So there, you give you a look at that. So, anyway, I figured I'd throw this out, HD close up right there, um, you know, frame uh, or hammer mounted uh, firing pin, of course, 1948. But that's cool that this is before the Model 10. This is a pre-Model 10. This is known as the uh, um, Smith & Wesson Military and Police, you know? So that's kind of neat. I wanted to show that off to you. It's a C prefix dating back to 1948. This is the last run of where they were to um, offer the uh, this type of site and there's before they made the changes. And of course, I got the Model 10-5. I'll show you that in another close-up video and you'll see the changes in that. Anyway, I'm Batjack JW signing off for now. That's a close-up of this. Check out my other videos of the Model 10. I do have them up on the channel, but this one I wanted to do HD close-up right at you. Anyway, check out the story of a gun episode about this and everything. You'll see also the other Model 10. It's quite an interesting story. Anyway, signing off for now. Like, share, and subscribe.